Right, cool. Okay, good, good, good. Right, da. Uh, ah, yeah. So, pick up track from yesterday. So, yeah, so for, uh, just with that, um, that verse again, which pick up on that. Five minutes past in the cauldron of noise, no one could seem to stop. Each tried holding her breath or thinking of death or pinching her thigh, only to catch the eye of a pal. A crimson, uh, shaking, silent girl explode through the nose and a crackling sneeze. Thank you, please. Uh, screeched Miss Dunn, clapping her hands as though she applauded the choir that had become a percussion of trills and whoops filling the room like birds in a cage. But then came a triple rap at the door and in stopped Miss Fife, head of Matt, who's called the question to scan the desk for a suitable scapegoat. Um, so a lot going on in that verse too there. Um, so lots of classic um, Duffy sort of techniques going on in that verse. internal rhymes going on um you know pinching her thigh only to catch the eye yeah so it gives that sort of um gives that nice rhythm to it um then we've got the um i suppose we have got the semantic field oops what a better phrase oh, no, let, let's change that uh, you know We've got the motif of the sound words uh, from so we've got the um so we've got the noise um and then we've got a crackling yeah Yeah, and all, all, all those sort of sound words, I mean, it, it all sort of starts off, doesn't it, from that sort of, it all begins with that cauldron of noise, doesn't it, to begin with, um, and we go through it. So we've got, we've got the extended metaphor. Um, Um, it all carries on. It, it all gets kicked off by that sort of very cold and a noise, and it sort of carries on. And and it has various different um, sort of sound qualities coming through. You know, the, with the crackling, sneeze, clapping, trills and whoops. Um, it sort of makes that movement away, doesn't it, to to becoming something that's joyous, um, happy, and engaging. Um, we've also got the puns. Uh, the, and the play on words that we've got going on here. Um, you know, we've got the, the, the maths teacher with the cold equation of her eyes. And all of that's sort of been linked to that school background all the time. Um, you know, we had the percussion of the trills and whatnot. So it, it's kind of getting linked to that sort of school curriculum, the things that they're sort of they're, they're, they're all sort of used to. We also have that image of um, like birds in a cage. The similarly, they're like birds in a cage. What does that suggest about them? If they're birds in a cage. Yeah, that idea of being, you know, it's almost like trying to contain, isn't it? The image is containing them. You know, the, the, I suppose that, again, if you know, with the birds in the cage, that image. Um,
what we can think about with that image working there is that you know they are like bugs in a cage and it's about the teachers trying to keep them maintained kept in there isn't it that sort of idea but really with this sort of, you know this growth of sound this cauldron of noise this bumbling this explosion of laughter that's going that will spring from class to class it shows that they can't be contained and i've kind of used that idea it's like here the girls have been seen almost like you know it's like wild creatures being kept in captivity you can only do it for so long it only works for so long and then they will break free and it's, it's almost like through this laughter that is, is is what we've got taking place here now the teachers what gender are the teachers they're all female just like the girls are uh, in the school all female so what do you think Duffy might be doing with these sort of rebellious teenage girls against their female teachers? What what's maybe being suggested here? What should we be exploring? How these changes go over, like yeah, it can be that about a change. And what would maybe the teachers represent? how a young lady is expected to be, isn't it? You know, they, the, the, the older teachers, the missies, they are the, they are the role models for these young girls. You are meant to grow up to be like us, to behave like us, to, you know, have that knowledge in the way that we have, go on and, and live a life that we have. And with this laughter here, what are the, what are the, what are the girls saying to their teachers? <laughs> no, we're not going to live that way. We are going to rebel. Yeah. Um, no, we'll come to that a little bit later. Yeah, oh, we can do that over here. Yeah. Um, and so we've got Geraldine Ruth got to her feet a pale girl, a girl who looked in the stale classroom light like a sketch for a girl, a first draft to be crumpled and crunched and tossed away like a note. She cleared her throat raising her eyes, water and sky, to look at Miss Fife. The girls who were there that day never forgot how invisible crayons seemed to colour in Geraldine Ruth, white face to puce, mousy hair suddenly gifted with health and youth, and how, as Miss Fife demanded, what was the meaning of this, her lips split from the closed bud of a kiss to the daisy chain of a grin, and how then she yodelled a laugh with the full, open, blossoming throat of her throat, a flower of merriment. What happens to Geraldine Ruth there? What, what, what is the significance of Geraldine Ruth here? What happens in that verse? Going from, you know, she, she, she starts off with as a, a pale girl, um, a girl who looks like a first draft to be crumpled and crunched until by the end of that verse, um, she blo blooms and, and, and blossoms in, in front of this teacher. What, what is, what's the image that Duffy's trying to get across here? Do you think? Good, it changes power. And she goes from being almost like insignificant to confident, isn't it? It's that whole idea. Good. Oops. <laughs>
So that idea isn't it about, and again, here we can we can begin to sort of insert that bit in as well, about how the girls, they're, they're it, it, it's teenage rebellion we're getting here. And, and, you know, she mentioned she talks about the girl in the stale classroom. Again, it shows you that sort of old um, stuffiness, isn't it? Uh, it's that conventionality. And it's, it's the girls breaking free from that, saying, no, we're not going to be like you. Uh, you know, we're going to be individuals in our own rights. Um, You know, what we're looking at here is that sort of transitioning change because obviously the setting very much is, is a school in, in the late 1950s, that sort of thing. And, and it's about that sort of um, change with respect to enter the good old swing in 60s sort of thing when it's that sort of youth counterculture becomes it. It's, it's finally, it's a it's the rebellion against the sort of post-war years, which were seen as really drab and dull and boring. Um, and here it is about females beginning to find the voice you know, their, their place in society. Um, and it's just, a, and so it is looked upon as being as well, this idea it's about the changing sort of a uh, way that feminism now is about to enter that new phase where women are going to be heard, they're liberated, you know, they're vocal, they're confident, they're expressive. Um, and again, some 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 lovely um, isn't there some some lovely imagery going on here as well? You know that idea about the lips split from the closed bud of a kiss to the daisy chain of a grin. It's a, it's a wonderful sort of transformation, you know, isn't it? And sort of confidence, you know, and that idea of a daisy chain of a grin. You know, it's big, it's broad, it's bold, and then a yodeling laugh. There's there's a laugh and a half, isn't it? One that yodels. Uh, and again, we have it there, that, that idea that she, the, the images here is one of a flower of merriment. Um, and it's just that image of sheer joy, happiness, loving life, isn't it? Oops. Uh, it's that idea of being joyous. And then we have, and that in contrast, isn't it? All the time it's the contrast of being offset here, isn't it? Of, of the sort of um, unconventionality of the girls, the, the spontaneity of the girls, the laughter taking hold of them. We then have, have, the, have the adults in the room trying to maintain, you know, that sort of sense and other other classics and maybe a bit sort of old-fashioned but i mean more of these sort of classic kind of teacher talk moments you know what's the big joke thundered miss fife as miss dunn began again to clap as gargling geraldine ruth collapsed in a heap on her desk as the rest of the class hollered and hooted and howled miss fife strode on sharp heels to the blackboard snatched up a finger of chalk and jabbed and slashed out a word silence but the class next door, fourth years, learning the Beaufort scale with Miss Bat, could hear the commotion. Miss Bat droned on, not calm. One, light air. Two, light breeze. Three, gentle. Four, moderate. Five, fresh. Six, strong bees, breeze. Seven, moderate gale. Stephanie Fay started to laugh. Now, what do you notice here? 
about the language that is used in connection with the teachers, the imagery, what, what is being shown here? I mean, the verse before, you've got this, this sort of blossoming of Geraldine Ruth. How are the teachers used in comparison in that next verse? Yeah, isn't it? Good. Yeah, is that kind of harsh? Yeah. So we've got the first of all, we've got the, the, the girls who all, you know, as a class, hollered and hooted and howled. What techniques do you there's a couple of techniques going on here? Uh, and what's what's the inference? What's the image? We've got alliteration going on, haven't we? We have got the H H H, so we've got alliteration. What else? Hard and hooted and howled. We've got tripling. Yeah. That's the three. Got tripling going on. And what image is created with that? Hollered, hooted, hoot hooted, hooted and howled. Do you think of anything? Yeah, so it's that kind of animalistic image, isn't it? And it's almost that idea, isn't it? That they're just giving in to their nature, isn't it? The girls, they just, it's just this explosion of, of them being themselves. I mean, again, we've got lots of things, isn't it? So again, if you look at the language that is used with Miss Five here, um, and just begin to pick out, you know, the fact she strode on, you know, again, how do you move if you if you stride into a room? How do you do that? It's forcefully, isn't it? It's, a, it's all about, it's power. And she is on sharp heels. So again, think about the sound, you know, again, it'd be like wooden floor, wouldn't it? That sort of thing. And so is that sort of, you know, sort of the power of the, of, the, of the foot coming down in the floor. Um, and so she strode and sharp goes to the blackboard and then she snatches up. And she's got the finger of chalk and she jabbed and slashed, you know, as a kind of sort of, there's a violence, isn't there, within, within that um, language there. Why do you think she does that? What's that? What's that sort of conveying? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Thank you. I've got a, I don't know. What do I mean? What do you mean? <laughs> Nothing wrong. I'll probably pop up on that one in about a minute later. Head, uh, do, 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 some bit strode. Uh, yeah, sharp heels, snatched, jabbed, and slashed. So again, it's this idea, isn't it? You know, it, it, it's violent, it's oppressive, it's trying to keep, it's trying to dominate the situation, isn't it? But it's only making the matters worse, um, because you know, because as they talk about, you know, the room's been lost here. Uh, there's no way going to get it back. But again, it shows that in their conventional way, they can only behave in this way. They can't react in any other way. They don't know how, know how to. Um, Uh, 
Um, and obviously, you know, we've got to, and she jumped and she slashed out the word on the, on the board and, and silence. And it's a, obviously that's in the block capital. So it's it's like a silent shout, isn't it? Almost, you know, it's that, you know, it, by just putting the word on the board, you know, that's meant to have that effect. Now, what does the Beaufort scale measure? Do we know? Yeah. Do you want to Google? Have a quick Google on your on your device there. What what is a Beaufort scale measure? Yeah. Now, do you see any humour going on here by her using? that, the Beaufort scale in that next class, and think about where it ends. You know, it's going up, isn't it? Through a, a gradation of things, isn't it? Starting off from calm, light, all the way through to strong breeze to moderate gale. What could that be symbolic of? Yeah, isn't it? That, 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 there, I me when you, th this Beaufort scale could easily be applied to the laughter of the girls as it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And again, can you control wind? No, it's a force of nature, isn't it? You can't, you can't beat it. You, you, you can't defy it. And it's almost like here, isn't it? What's going on with the girls? It's just a force of nature. It has to be allowed to run its course. You cannot, you can't stop it. But the teachers are, are, are trying their best to contain this. Yeah. If you think about it as well, you can also have, you know, when it's about when people are, you know, really lost in their life, you kind of have um, sort of games of laughter where people are just, you know, they're just lost in that moment. They can't stop themselves. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. And so every kind of measure that's been used here by the teacher, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't work. But of course, they, they fall on to the same old pattern. What so I'm using? Stephanie Faye, Bart Miss Bat. What so I'm using? Echoed unwitting Miss Dunn on the other side of the wall. Precisely what so I'm using? Chorus Miss Fife. The fourth year shrieked with amazed delight and one wag, Angela Joy, popped her head in the jaws of her desk and bellowed, What so I'm using? What so I'm using? into its musty yawn. The third form guffawed afresh at the sound of the fourth, and the noise of the two combined was heard by the first form trying to get Shakespeare by heart. And again, all of this, I kind of let, you know, we've got, obviously we've got the, the jaws of the desk, we've got personification going on, isn't it? But the, it, what it's got is that musty yawn. So again, everything connected with the schools, isn't it? It's old, it's boring, it's stale, yeah? The use of the um, teacher sort of chorusing here, that again, can, we can see that has been offset to the sort of the, 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 the choir of the children as they, as they laugh in the previous verses, their sort of thing. That's been offset against that as it carries on through. Okay. Um, so the first one, I'm trying to get Shakespeare by heart uh, to the beat of a ruler of Mrs. Mackay. Don't look at your books, look at me. After three friends, Romans, countrymen, What's so amusing, wrapped out Mrs. Mackay's the first years, chirped and trilled like baby birds in a nest at a worm. But she heard for herself, appalled, the chaos coming in waves through the wall and clipped to the door. Uproar and her head of lower school, 
and, and her head of sorry, lower school. It was then that Mrs Mackay made mistake number one, leaving her form on its own while she went to see to the forms of Miss Bat and Miss Dunn. The moment she'd gone, the room blossomed with paper planes and bombs, whistles, snatches of song, and the class clown, Caroline Joan, stood in her desk and took up the speech where Mrs Mackay had left off. Lend me your ears. Just what the second form did in the opposite room, reciting the poet's laureate from Miss Nadim Baba, Baba uh, John Dryden, Thomas Shadwell, Nathan Tate, Nicholas Rowe, Lawrence Houston, Colin Kibber, William Whitehead, but scattering titters and giggles like noisy confetti on reaching Henry Pye as Caroline Joan belted out Anthony's speech in Elvis style. For Brutus, uh huh, uh, is an honourable man, Miss Nadim Baba, no fan of rock and roll, could scarcely believe her ears deducing at once that Mrs Mackay was not with her class. She popped an anxious head outside her door. Anarchy roared in her face like a tropical wind. The corridor clock was at four. Uh, and so here we see with these next two verses, isn't it? It's all about that spreading and spreading um, of the laughter throughout the school. Um, and it's gone all the way down, isn't it? You know, get that again, all the time with the girls, there are these sort of nice natural images being conveyed by Duffy. You know, we had the, we had the one girl um, who sort of blossoms like a flower in front of the teacher uh, as she grows up. Here we've got the, 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 the first years being compared to baby birds, you know, trilling um, and with delight here as they hear the sort of laughter coming through in waves. Not like our own first year, uh, year seven C. I would I would say yeah, yeah. a little bit different here. And, and it's that idea, you know, there's that sort of softness and gentleness to them. There's, there's a warmth, there's personality, individuality to, to all of them. Um, and then, you know, it, it's, it's the teachers. Uh, we see this, you know, we have we have chaos, um, as far as they're concerned, there's the chaos coming in waves. Uh, we've got uproar taking place. Um, and so that's, that's the kind of adult view but once again, when she goes, left to their own devices, the room blossoms. It's almost that when the adults go out, bless you, we're all sneezing today, aren't we? Um, need to go on my dusting later on. <laughs> uh, it's almost that when the adults leave the room, what does it allow it to take place within the room? Yeah. More dra there's more drama, but when, when the teachers are in the room, the room is stale, it is musty, it is stuffy, it is conventional. When the teacher walks out of the room, what ha what transformation takes place to the classroom? It blossoms. And so what's it going into? What element? It's Can you make any connection to nature? It's the, it's the adults in the room that are stopping this liveliness, you know, this growth, this potential from coming out. You know, again, it's that idea of the birds trapped in the cage all the time. You know, they've gotten, I mean, it's, we're, we're stuck with doing it like this just now. But it is that having them sitting in rows two by two, all facing the front, all eyes on the board, repeat after me, everything that's on there, isn't it? That's what they're doing. The minute that goes, that, that sort of, um, controlling force is taken out of the room it then becomes its natural environment it's a place it's a room that is filled with laughter with happiness uh, with that kind of, kind of un unconventional behavior it is just that sort of elemental force yeah 
Let's see, we can put that. Right. So we'll go with that one. Oops. Okay, so what we can be into thinking, you know, it just, you know, it says, you know, the room blossoms, you know, we've got the paper plane saying bombs and lots of stuff, everything about it, it's, it, it's, it's fun, it's life, it's unconventional, it's boldness, it's individual, it's spirited, isn't it? It's a much happier place. Okay. And there's a phrase that every teacher uses. Have you, have you, I'm sure you've come across at times. Have you heard a teacher use the phrase about someone being the class clown? Yeah, that's one that stood the test of time. Right? <laughs> it's been gone for many a year now. Um, obviously, the, the reference to Elvis, you know, who's Elvis here? I'm sure, we all know. Yeah. Yeah, Presley, you know, so again, that, that places it in that 1950s, you know, and again, it's about, it's about that time, he's, he's seen as, you know, he, he's seen as being symbolic as that, that, that period of change from the sort of stuffiness of the, the, the post-war era into the, the era of rock and roll in the 1960s and that sort of teenage rebellion. And so we've got that there and we've got the, 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 the image of the girl on the step, on the, um, on the desk. You know, mimicking Elvis as she she, she belts out sort of uh, lines of Shakespeare sort of thing. But again, it's something that we know that Duffy likes to do. Um, you know, I'm putting in that sort of um, contextual reference. And, it, and it, it's symbolic as well of that idea that, you know, change is on its way and change is going to come. OK. And again, just as we had chaos earlier on, we've got anarchy roared in her face. So, sort of, you know, personif more sort of personification being used there with uh, anarchy roared in her face like a tropical wind and more that stuff. And again, these things, that this is a a force of nature that cannot be defeated um, and so we have it now it's got to the end of the day the corridor clock was at four um, so the last bell rang although they would later regret it the teachers taking their cue from wits end mrs mckay allowed the chuckling bright-eyed mirthful girls to go home reprimand free 
each woman um, privately glad that the dark afternoon was over and done, the chalky words rubbed away to dances, dust in the air, the dates, the battles, the kings and queens, the rivers and tributaries, poets, painters, playwrights, politicos, popes, but they all agreed to make it quite clear in tomorrow's assembly that foolish behaviour, even if, if only the once, wasn't admired or desired at Stafford Girls High. Above the school, the moon was pinned like a monitor's badge to the sky. And so here we have the sort of an ending of the first section of this poem. Oops. <coughs> So, as I, oh, don't worry, but I'm just about to finish up anyway, so don't worry, you're not going to miss it. <laughs> I'll be there anyway for you to catch up with later. Um, so, So here, in this verse, it, it does mark that end of, of the first section. Um, it's the end of the school day. Um, and it's this idea, you know, that the children themselves um, you know, they have kind of won this battle. Um, it's this idea that they've been allowed to be free, reprimand free, there's not been no repercussions um, for their poor bad behaviour. You know? And of course, obviously trying to do it in an assembly the next day, is that going to have any effect whatsoever? No, because that horse is just well and truly bolted. In fact, what might it do if you were to do that, if you're in that situation and you went and revisited it the next day, what do you think would happen in the assembly? Yeah, they just start laughing again. You know, it's going to be that thing, and then the whole thing's going to kick over again and again. But it's that nice way. The 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 the, 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 the end of the school day uh, is used to kind of mark that end, that section of the poem. Um, whoops. And whereas up to now, So now it's all been about isn't it? the setting's been in the classroom it's all about you know it's almost like the pupils verse and the teachers there it now changes you know and what we then find out that what we're going to find out in the next section of it um is about the, sort of the teacher's lives outside of school. Um, and this is where we begin to have more of, of the personality of each teacher, um, the relationships that they have with each other. Uh, and, and we see that even within this sort of this world of sort of uh, conventionality um, that, that appears to be within the classroom, outside of the classroom, these teachers themselves are anything but conventional. And we see that, that that's kind of then stripped away. And it's almost like, you know, the school has compelled them to conform as well and to be who they are. Uh, and Duffy then begins to explore saying, right, actually away from, you know, the rules and regulations of the school, this is what these teachers are like. Okay. Um, Right, now since your device is, has died, it would seem, no, 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 don't worry about that, no, no, it would, and, and because we got to this this end, or, or this section of the poem, it would seem a really good place to obviously kind of break. Uh, if I could just flick back to higher up in the, um, yeah, the one note here, uh, a little bit of thing that you can begin to, as we work our way through here, um, is begin to fill in yourselves into the grid here about how disruption flows through this poem. Um, you know, obviously, so I've got there down examples uh, and you bring in a, a quotation of what it might be. So again, here, the teaching the teaching of the storm warning and the scale, uh, and then you know, the, the sort of comment that you might get for that, the tendency of people to be taught to measure and quantify things could be um, considered to be masculine tradition. And yeah, we can think about it that way as well. And um, that here are girls that have been taught things that aren't really so 
you know, useful for them sort of thing. But that idea of a storm being associated with the disruption of power of feminism, and also just that very much as we've said ourselves, that sort of storm um, brewing within it, within what's it called, within the poem itself. Um, Okay, as you go through, yeah, it'll be something that you can just go back and, and, and sort of reinforce your own understanding of what we've done. You can fill in parts of that grid there and look at something as it goes along. Okay, right, well, there we shall end it then for today and leave it. You still sadly got a bit of a long wait for lunch, yeah. but. Oh, 10 past one, no. I'm not surprised, you know, you think, oh God, it's 10 past yeah. one, it's a time. Oh, seems mad. Okay, okay, have a good weekend. Right, so that's not.